Before I begin, I want to give a quick reminder that customers should base their purchasing decisions on products and services currently available. Hello everyone and welcome back. So far in this series, you have learned how to build applications with clicks. You have learned how to create the data model, how to design and customize the user experiences, and how to use the automations and validations while you build the applications, all without writing code. Today, we'll see how, where, and when to use the code. We'll also see how to build the engaging customer experiences using the latest and modern web standards. Let's get started. So far, we have implemented the model using objects and relationships. And that is the only way to implement the model. We can use the objects provided by Salesforce called standard objects, or we can create the custom objects. We have customized the view using page layouts and record types. We have learned how to create pages using lighting pages and screen flows. Have we created any controller or used any controllers? No, we have not created any controllers so far, but how did our application work? Salesforce provides standard CRUD functionality out of the box. That is how we were able to create, update and delete records so far. We have also used flow automations to implement business logic. Okay, can we create views and controllers using code? The answer is yes. But there is one important point to keep in mind. Most of the times the problems can be solved using point and click tools. So you can code if you want to implement complex business logic. Now, let's see how we can create views and controllers using code. We can use Lighting Web Components to build engaging user experiences. It is a modern UI framework with which any JavaScript developer can build user experiences. It is built on web standards. You can create custom HTML elements. These components can be used on and off the Salesforce platform. And we can use Apex to implement custom controllers. Apex is a strongly typed, modern, object-oriented programming language. It is syntactically similar to Java and C-sharp, but much easier to learn. Let's see how it works. A typical web component can contain a HTML file, JavaScript file, and optionally a CSS, just like any other front-end. As I said earlier, a controller can be implemented using Apex. We can invoke the Apex method from the JavaScript file of the Lighting Web Component. You can perform DML operations using the Apex DML statements or the methods of the database class. For instance, insert DML adds one or more records. You can also retrieve the data using Sockle. There is no mistake in this slide. It is Sockle, Salesforce Object Query Language. Here, we are querying the Salesforce object to retrieve the data. Sockle is similar to select statement in the widely used structure query language SQL and it is compact. Let's see it in action. Here I am in showroom app. Let's open the inventory page. We used lighting web components to implement this page. You can see that this page has tiles. Each tile shows a car image, its model, range and win. It also shows the status of whether it is available or sold. If you click any one of these styles, it navigates to the vehicle record page. Let's go back. Let's now examine that using App Builder. We can access the App Builder by clicking the gear icon and edit page. If I select that, you can see this component is named inventory. Let's now check the code. Here I am in Visual Studio code. Most of you might already be knowing the VS Code. It is a lightweight IDE for those who don't know. And you can install plugins for whatever programming language you want to develop in. I have already installed Salesforce extensions because I am going to develop the applications on Salesforce platform. You can run the Salesforce development specific commands from the command palette. You can launch the command palette by clicking the gear icon on the bottom left and selecting the command palette. The Salesforce commands start with SFDX. For example, you can create lighting web components using the command SFDX create lighting web component. When you create the component, it automatically generates all the needed files like HTML, JavaScript and CSS in a directory. I already have the inventory component and opened the code here. 
On the left hand side of the file explorer, you can see there is a folder named inventory under the LWC folder. You can see that there is a HTML file, JavaScript file, CSS file and one special file with extension JS Meta XML. The HTML file is used to define the user interface of the component. The JavaScript file can be used to write the client side logic. Like any other web front end, you can use the CSS file to define the styles. The meta file can be used to define any configurations related to Salesforce Org. This is the only file specific to Salesforce and it is a simple file. Okay, let's examine the HTML file. It has a simple HTML5 syntax and it uses the template tag to define the UI. If you notice, there is a custom tag in it called a C inventory tile. C is the default namespace. You can also define components in your own namespace. The C inventory tile is another component composed in this component. This essentially means we can create lighting web components and use them in other components like any other HTML element. Let's see its code. Here, you can see a lighting badge tag. This is the base component. Salesforce provides you some base components that you can use for standard user interfaces. You need not write the code for standard user interfaces. If you closely examine, you can see that it uses an image tag. This tag displays the car image in the component. So, inventory component has an inventory tile component that has an image tag. Okay, let's go back to the inventory component code and examine it. Here, you can see if true and for each directives. These can execute conditions and iterations in the user interface. LWC provides these directives. Here we are iterating through a list of vehicles and for each vehicle we are displaying it in a tile. Did you notice those curly braces? With this pretty simple syntax we can access the properties defined in the JavaScript file. In this case we are accessing the vehicle property. Okay, now let's examine the JavaScript file. Here you can see that we have defined a class inventory that extends the lighting element. The vehicles property that we have referred to in the HTML file is defined here. Now let's see how we can retrieve the list of records by using an Apex controller. First, we import the get vehicles Apex method as a module to make it available in the JavaScript code. This method is defined in the inventory controller class. You can then wire this get vehicles method to the vehicles property. That's it. When we wire the property of the vehicle, it becomes reactive, which means when its value changes, the view is automatically updated. Okay, let's now see how the inventory controller is implemented. Does this code look familiar? It is pretty similar to Java code. The public keyword defines its visibility. With sharing keyword imposes the security. You will learn about security in the next video. We are using the class keyword just like in any other programming language. What's more interesting is we are retrieving the data by directly writing the SQL query in the square brackets. Unlike other technologies, we are not creating any database connections, commands or environments. We are directly executing the SQL query and retrieving the data. You can see that we have simple syntax to create collections where we are storing the retrieved data and returning it. Here we are returning a list of vehicles that we saw in user interface. LWC can also access data without using Apex. It can access data through something called as Lightning Data Service Adapters. You can learn more about it from the LWC developer guide whose link is shared in the description below. Controllers is not the only place where we use the Apex code. For example, we can use the Apex code to implement the triggers. The Apex triggers enable you to write your own custom actions that can be executed before or after changing the records. First, let's understand how the Apex triggers work. A trigger is executed before or after the operations like insert, update or delete. Whenever we do operations like insert, update or delete, the changes are saved to the object. A before trigger is executed before the changes are saved, which essentially means that if you want to do any update or validate the record before it is actually saved to the database, you can do it in the before trigger. 
after triggers are used to access the field values that are set by the system like record id lost modified date etc which will only be available after the record is saved in these triggers we can perform post operation actions like say changing other records logging into audit table etc before trigger can be implemented for insert update and delete events after trigger can be implemented for insert update delete and undelete events after record is deleted it will be in recycle bin for certain time this record can be undeleted and restored in which case it will be again saved in the database that is why after trigger can be implemented on undelete event if you see it the other way around before the record is undeleted it will be in recycle bin and the trigger should not be executed on the data in the recycle bin hence we cannot implement before trigger for undelete event trigger has a simple syntax we use the trigger keyword give a trigger name give the object name on which the trigger has to be executed give a list of events like before insert before update after insert etc and here you can write the trigger code okay let's now see it in action i have a simple use case whenever a test drive is created i want to automatically create a task and reminder to the agent or user to call the customer one day before the test drive i can actually implement this using flows as well but i want to show a simple use case for the trigger so i have chosen this okay as i want to create a task immediately after a test drive record is created i can use the after insert event here the trigger dot new is called a context variable which holds all the records that are inserted in the current context in our case the recently created test drive record also note that this context variable contains a list of records which essentially means that it also works for a bulk update operation for each test drive record in the operation we are creating a task record and populating its subject description priority status etc and setting the task activity date to a day before the test drive date we are inserting the record using the insert dml operation notice that we are not inserting the record in the for loop but adding it to a list there and finally inserting the complete list in one insert operation this is called bulkification this helps us not to run into the cloud computing limits okay Let's see how this trigger works now. Here I'm in the showroom app and let me open a vehicle record. Let's create a test drive by opening the related tab. Let's fill in the customer name, choose a time slot and save. Let's refresh the page if need be and there you go. You can see that it has created a reminder task. Great. Before we go I want to show two more examples of Apex one to make an external callout and the other to enable Apex code to be invoked from the flow Here I am in VS code and let's see this web push service class The first method makes an external callout If you are from Java or .net kind of technologies this code looks pretty familiar Here we are creating a http request and filling in the details we are sending the request using the http send call and then we are processing the response is it not simple okay if you examine the following method it is annotated with at invocable method any method that is annotated with at invocable method can be invoked from a flow we have invoked this flow invoked web push method from the flow using apex action if you remember from the last video if you forgot it No worries. Here is the proof. <laughs> I was just kidding. This screenshot is from the last video. This is how we invoke the flow invoked web push method. That's all in the demo for today. It's important to note that most often we can implement the business logic using clicks then code. At the same time, coding is inevitable when you want to implement the complex business logic. Today we explored. how to create the engaging customer user experiences using lightning web components we saw how to implement the code for the apex controllers then we saw how easy it is to implement the triggers using apex 
We also saw how to make the external callouts using Apex and how to make the Apex invocable from the automations like flows. This is a quick start, so we kept it as concise as possible. In the next video, you'll be learning how to secure your app, object, and other data and other resources using the security model of Salesforce. Please let us know your thoughts in the comment section of this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to post them there too. We'll be happy to answer those questions. Thank you for watching and please like the video if it is valuable and connect with us on our social channels. If you want to get more content like this pushed directly to you, subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to get notifications. Thank you.